It's the show that is all about local music in the Upper Cumberland. This is the 9 o'clock news local edition. We do this every Sunday night. And the cool thing about this is not just playing the local bands for you on this show, but getting a chance to talk to some of the bands. We do that each week with a different in-studio guest. This week, lucky to have with us of the sky. And I'm seeing double. Well, kind of, because I've got Joey and I've got Joe. Say hi, Joey. Hi, Joey. (laughs) Say hi, Joe. (laughs) Hi, Joe. Now you guys hail from Sparta? Actually, uh, Livingston and Cookville, respectively. Uh, two fellows from Livingston and uh, Joey from... Uh, Sparta. Well, yeah, it was Cookville, now yeah. Sparta. So you grew up around this area then. Did you guys go to school together? or? Uh, actually, I went to school at Livingston Academy, and I, you know, I'm not Joey's biographer or anything, but I'm pretty sure Cookville High, right? Yes, Cookville High. So uh, parents pushed you into picking up an instrument or just something you gravitated towards on your own? Well, when I started in middle school, my parents first tried to get me into basketball, I guess because of the height and all. <laughs> didn't didn't really work out as much as I thought it would. So I decided, they said, well, you should probably get into something. So I went and decided, hey, I'm going to try band. And they said, well, what, what instrument are you going to play? I said, well, if I'm going to be in band, I want to do the drums. Just something I've always found out, found interesting to me. So, okay. So. As far as I'm concerned, uh, I, I kind of got a bass shoved in my hand when I was in <laughs> high school from some guys trying to put together a band. I was like, hey, I don't play bass. They're like, hey, it doesn't matter. Bass players don't matter. Oh, so, <laughs> wow. Uh, and, and it kind of evolved from there, uh, from <laughs> you know just getting it forced on me because a couple of my buddies <clears throat> wanted to start a band to uh, deciding to pick up and learn for myself and being parts of other people's bands to pretty much just to st- deciding after a while that I wanted to write my own music and wanted to perform with a set of guys that had the same idea and the same vision as I had. So it, it's pretty much kind of arced since early high school to right now from being, you know, kind of thrust into it and playing other people's stuff and playing in cover bands to actually getting out and finding somebody like Joey and somebody like John where we get to play what we feel and what we think, and it's kind of our own vision. Okay, and John, of course, unfortunately could not be with us today. John, you're front man, yeah. and so uh, the vocals, and I'm guessing also the, the other guitar? Actually, bass. <laughs> Base, so you he's, sh- the, he's the Getty Lee. Surprisingly, yeah. you switched off then. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Well, there's no shame in that. Uh, Getty Lee, great name to drop, and oh, yeah. also would have gone uh, Gene Simmons. So, oh yeah. You know, a, a lot of great basemen out there. We won't. We're not slamming bass players. <laughs> Nobody's calling anybody a Kip Winger. Not on this show. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny is half the people who hear that joker are like, "Who's Kip Winger?" Look it up. I just got him a little bit of a ratings boost, probably. So that's okay. So that's how you guys started out, yes. kind of picking up your instruments uh, early on and kind of going from there. So was it you going out and finding everybody else, or was it uh, they just kind of fell into your lap? Uh, well, to be perfectly honest, uh, Joey was the one that actually, uh, my previous band had just split up, a band by the name of Knee Deep in Stereo, and uh, Joey had placed an ad on Local Sales Network, the the bastion for musicians around here, <laughs> <laughs> uh, looking for somebody. And um, I just decided after talking to him that he was somebody that really had his heart in the right place and wanted to do it and was really interested in playing so we decided that we would get together and start playing and uh just just like anything else whenever you start playing with somebody the first couple weeks are always rough and you you have to start out with just one song and make sure you get that one song and beat to death that one song and then you have to build on it from there and we we went through those times uh where you know it, it pretty much just came down to beating the songs to death to learn them and getting to know how he plays and him getting to know my little quirk mm-hmm. as a musician. And that, I believe, is the hardest part. And we were really, really lucky to make it past that because a lot of bands don't. Yeah. Well, let's talk about some of your songs. Tell me about this one. Four-letter word. What was that about other than just a little profanity? <laughs> oh, I don't know. have anything to do with profanity. Yeah, we don't necessarily actually. think it's profane. <laughs> I mean... There's a lot of four-letter words in the... <laughs> I think love. there's more four-letter, four-letter words than anything else in the, yeah. in the dictionary. I was going to say, I'm pretty sure that a lot of people think of love as a four-letter word. So. <laughs> um, as far as that song goes, it was um, it, it's really just kind of built out of emotion. It's, su- it's such a really simple song. I think there's maybe two, three parts of that entire song. Really, really basic, kind of guttural feeling. And <clears throat> the overall theme of that song is just... Um, 
being unsure, being unsure about where you are in your life. It's a song written from a point of view of somebody who's conf confused. They want to find the way, but they're unsure whether or not they're getting it from what they're being told. This is Of The Sky with Four Letter Word on the 9 o'clock news local edition on Rock 93.7. It's the 9 o'clock news local edition here on Rock 93.7. Every week we talk to somebody different on this show. And this week I've got members of, of the Sky. And uh, you guys, you, you can be found out doing live stuff, but that's not the only place people can find you. And I, I know you guys are online. You've got mm -hmm. uh, yes, a little bit of stuff that's on the web. Uh, you want to tell them where they can find you online? Oh, yes. There is a Facebook. Reverb Nation page yeah, and I, a Facebook page. Uh, yeah. We have a Facebook uh, page like most bands have. Facebook, though, they love to make you pay for the... Uh, the promotion stuff. yeah, yeah that's they're, the they're biggest. pretty bad about their their feeds that's, <laughs> thank, uh... thank you mark zuckerberg <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, don't sue me bro i was just joking um it, but it'd be facebook.com slash of the sky. the sky and uh i'm pretty sure our reverb nation is Flash of the sky same yeah. thing we we're lucky no other pants had our name usually there's uh usually there's a <laughs> somebody battle. it's usually like of the sky fourteen eleven nine one seven two john <laughs> wow <laughs> So, well, Luckily, okay, we're well, the only one of the sky in this area. So yeah. well, Good, good, good. So that's it. Uh, ReverbNation.com. Just uh, do a search for Of the Sky. And make sure you put in Sparta, because you've got Sparta listed, I think, is uh, your town. It's either Sparta or Cookville, probably. One of the two. I'm not sure exactly. But uh, uh, I do know that you guys have music up there. And so how do you factor in the online community, too? Because uh, let's say you've got somebody that's, you know, maybe a cross-country doing a little search and they're trying to find music of your style and they come across you. Does it, do you, do you have a connection with anything like that or? Oh yeah. You can get on websites like Bandcamp. You can make yourself available through iTunes and it kind of makes you, it kind of helps you have this worldwide presence and you'd be shocked how much tagging similar bands on certain websites. Like, Oh, they've tagged that they're like this band. Okay. And I want to see more bands like this band. I'm going to look them up and stuff like that. Like whenever um, I really started out liking music and getting into it, I would, you know, I would go to some of these websites. Of course, this is a kind of pre iTunes, but stuff on MySpace and stuff like that. And it would say similar to the band that you're looking at. And I'd be like, all right, I'm going to give them a chance. And then, you know, this band is similar to this one. And, and that's how a lot of the, the nation gets turned on to some of these bands that have become really popular. Um, or even something as simple as a YouTube video. Oh, yeah. We actually got one of our shows on there, don't we? Oh, yeah. we. I mean, doing stuff like that, having YouTube videos, having a YouTube video available of a concert, uh, making sure that people are aware of the likenesses and the influences of your band really help get the name out. Tagging, you know, tagging in post bands that you're similar to. You know, I hate hashtags, but stuff like that kind of helps with popularity. <laughs> Hashtag Our culture is going <laughs> down the tubes. Hashtag down the tubes. But, uh, <laughs> Technology is a big part of it, too. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, it allows you yeah. access that you wouldn't have had, you know, in years past. Yeah. Starting out as a local band, you really had to get out and hit the clubs and then get on the road and then try to make a thing of it. Now, Back in the days as the you said, you've got a, a concert up on YouTube. People can go check that out and mm -hmm. see, oh, what are these guys like live? I can watch a little preview of their show and kind of have an idea of, uh, I want to go catch that show now. So yeah. do you feel like that's actually helping your cause or hurting your cause? I, I think it helps some. I mean, I really, really do think it helps, but I also think it leads to kind of oversaturation. I mean, you have to kind of think about it this way. Like in the 60s and se even 50s, 60s, and 70s, there were a lot of bands, but there are nowhere near as many bands as there are now. Everybody <laughs> has a band now. There's so much competition now. It's, it's, it is, I mean, I'm sure it was dog eat dog in the 60s and 70s and 80s, but nowadays there's just a billion bands competing for one person's money like you know back in the old days <laughs> who am i gonna buy am i gonna buy the beatles am i gonna buy the rolling stones am i gonna buy the kinks am i gonna <laughs> now it's just like there are 40 billion bands on these websites and it, it, it's it's a blessing it is it is totally a blessing because you get to reach people across the country you can reach people across the world but it's also, it makes things harder on you as well because you have so much competition. That is Joe and Joey of Of The Sky talking to me about what it's like making their music. We'll have more with them on the 9 o'clock news local edition on Rock 93.7.
It's the 9 o'clock news local edition on Rock 93.7. Spending some time this week talking with our guest of the sky. And if you'd like to be one of these in-studio guests, go to our website to get the details at rock937online.com. You can submit your entry through there, and I can be talking to you in one of the coming weeks. And uh, you guys, it, when you're putting this together, it, I'm just kind of curious as to how you decided on the way the lineup is. What made you lock in with a trio? Uh, there's a lot of bands that they decide they're going to be a four piece. They're going to be, you know, there's going to be a couple of guitars and, and, and they're going to have a drummer over here and maybe they'll have dual leads or maybe what made you decide we're going the trio route? Uh, as far as I'm concerned, and, and I, I think Joey really appreciates, you know, he, I think he kind of has his own reasons as well. But for me, it was, it's hard enough to find people to play locally anyway. And that was a part of it, finding two other people that I could trust and that I could rely on to show up and I could rely to be into the music. But the other thing is, I noticed that a lot of the bands that I liked were very simplistic bands. Like, I'm a big fan of The Police. And mm-hmm. it's just a three Love piece. The police. That was just a three piece band. Uh, of some of the more modern bands, uh, I, I really like early Green Day stuff. And, you know, of course, everybody goes through that phase where they like them. But there's a couple other bands, uh, I mean, just in the past couple of years that I've really, really liked bands like Alkaline Trio, which is more of a modern punk band, and Hot Water Music, and more lo-fi, simplistic bands because you, you can have your guesses and you can have your genesises and you can have all these bands that are really complicated, and they're great too, but there's still so many people out there that are into just basic three-chord songs, basic emotional stuff that... It's good to have a balance of the complicated and the complex and the simplistic and just basic human emotion type music. I think that's why stuff like punk rock is still, it goes away, but it's never really going to go away because it's really simple and basic and people mm-hmm. can relate to it. So that was another reason for the three pieces. We wanted to keep it simple and Good people are hard to find. <laughs> yeah, simple makes it easier to work along with each other too. You know, not as many people to try to work with their schedules. Also, finding the bass player was one of our obstacles to try try keeping a bass player. So we kind of just integrated it in with our singer. <laughs> like you, I choose you. Well, Since he knows how to play bass, we'll just keep you on bass yeah. too. So, all right. Well, we decided that we wanted to be a trio. Now we need to conquer the world we gotta write a whole bunch of songs and put an album together and get all the chicks is that no that wasn't the agenda I think we already had the chicks in yep. place we're, we're, <laughs> I, I chicks know, are there they're backing us up you know our rock and roll street cred is dashed but yeah we, we had girlfriends and everything walking into this yeah as far as like the songwriting process goes it's it's one of those things where we don't really force it like we might go a month or two months or three months with nothing new just rehearsing what we have Make it's sure, gonna, make sure to keep it fresh. Yeah, yeah, we won't, we won't force something out there just to have something new. So whenever we started playing, of course, I had a couple songs in hand, uh, one of which would be "Cross My Heart," um, and those were really easy because they were already there, they were already prepared. But whenever it comes to writing new material, we're, we almost sometimes we'll move really, really quick, two or three songs in a week, if. If the inspiration strikes us, if we do something that we really, really like and we want to build on, and then sometimes it's just a snail's pace where we can't find a right lyric to something or we can't write a right uh, a really good breakdown to something, and we'll just we'll have to shelve it until we come up with something that we think <laughs> is up to the standard. And that crossed my heart. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we just referenced that. That's uh, one of the songs that you have recorded. What's What's the story behind that? Your inspiration if you will <laughs> uh just not living up to what uh the verses are really simple it's just a matter of not living up to what's expected of you uh feeling that shame uh growing up that you're not going to be what everybody wants you to be and kind of coping with it so it's kind of you know mixing together that naivety of being a child and making these promises along with the reality of of you know, not living up to the expectations set for you and just having to cope with the person that you are. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough. Let's go ahead and give everybody a listen to this, kind of let them get a taste for themselves. It's Cross My Heart. This is Of The Sky on the 9 o'clock news local edition on Rock 93.7. It's the 9 o'clock news local edition on Rock 93.7, preparing to wind things down with this week's guest. We've got Of The Sky. So we're talking about uh, what what goes into your songwriting process. I think we've pretty well covered that. And, and 
getting out and performing, I think, would be the bigger thing. You say you guys work and you have schedules and things. So oh, yeah. how schedules. often do you get a chance to actually get up on a stage? Well, the thing that the problem that we really have in Cookville recently is that there's such a limited amount of venues to play in. Um, very limited. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can't agree with him uh, more. It's it's very receptive to bar bands. Let me just put it that way. And that's not to knock anybody, but it's it's a very college town bar band culture around here. So original bands don't really get the opportunities that some of the other, you know, Skinnered cover bands and stuff like that get. And there are a few places that are propping up, but every single time something will prop up, it'll usually become an issue with noise ordinance. You know, it'll be a lot of that do it yourself sort of, let's have a house show. Hey, let's have a show in an abandoned building somewhere as skeevy as that sounds. <laughs> and it usually lasts for a couple of weeks, then it just kind of gets tamped back down, and, uh, you know, and bands are stuck looking for somewhere else to play. One of the good places, and I, I really would like to plug them, is this place in Baxter called Art Shop 13. They've been very, very receptive to local bands that like to play originals and local artists. And if you contact them, they, they, they'll, they, they want people to actually come out and play. I mean, it's, it's one of those create-your-own-art type shops, but they've actually been very supportive of local music culture. A lot of the bands in the area that are kind of doing it for themselves and writing their own originals and kind of... You know, taking their own path, have had the opportunity to play there. Bands like uh, Sleep Nation, for one, which I mentioned uh, earlier before we start. Bands like The Ostrich Primer, bands like Fenda Britta, uh, a lot of the other local bands that play around here, they've had the opportunity to play there because they're just a very receptive place to local bands. Whereas in, in the city limits, there's not a whole lot of places for original bands to play anymore. So it's kind of rough that way. <laughs> well, do you guys uh, travel then? Do you do you book shows out of the area? Do you go? What's the farthest you've ever gone for a show? Uh, we've actually tried to stay mainly in the area recently. Uh, of course, um, being you know, I, I actually I work as an educator. Uh, he he works full time and. John is just now finishing up high school. We've got a younger guy in the band. We tried to that limits us too a little bit sometimes. Yeah, that limits some us. venues. Yeah, we we tried to stay locally as much as possible simply because we we feel as though we have to build a fan base here. Mm -hmm. Because what is the point of going to a place like Nashville or Murfreesboro where nobody's going to know us if people don't even know us in our own town? So it's kind of one of those things where we're not naive enough to think well we'll go to Nashville and the people will come. If they don't know who we are, yeah. they won't They won't be there. <laughs> if our hometown doesn't know who we are, we don't have pious dreams of, we're going to rule Nashville, <laughs> half the people in Cookville. we we got to get Cookville first. We've got to get our little areas first before we can move forward. So That way we have people following us where we go. Well, I'm going to have to say that it has been an honor spending the last hour or so getting to know you guys a little bit better. If you want to find out more about Of The Sky, you can. Go to ReverbNation.com and type in Of The Sky. Put in the city as Cookville or do the same thing on Facebook. Just go to Facebook and type in Of The Sky to get more. Thanks a lot, guys.